하지만 정성스럽게 찍은 꽃사진을 보면서 여러분들 느끼셨습니까? 네. 창자 주만 바라보실랍니까? <웃음> 예, 주만 바라볼지라 들려드리겠습니다. 작은 체제 있어요? 반주자님 작은 체제. 우리 반주자님을 위해서 박수 좀 쳐주세요. <웃음> 동창생 중에서 가장 밤에 통증에서 잠못 주시는 분이 주무시는 분이 우리 유영신 참가자님이십니다. 저기 선 뒤에 계시죠? 얼굴은 굉장히 밝아지셨는데 통증 때문에 밤에 잠을 못 주무신 분입니다. 그래서 책을 좀 읽어 보시지 그러세요. 요즘 책을 읽을 수도 없을 정도로 앉을 수도 누울 수도 없을 정도로 통증이 오신 분입니다. 그래서 이럴 땐 책도 안 읽고 그래서 노래를 하십시오. 그래서 여러분들 다윗의시 있죠 나의 하나님 그 절박할 때 불렀던 그 노래 들려드리도록 하겠습니다 Thank you. 
What flowers they are. Marvelous flowers. <laughs> Beautiful flowers, aren't they? That was a very beautiful explanation. Thank you, Mrs. Ha. Huh? What an explanation. Don't you love her intonation and way of explanation? <laughs> She's still back there. I tease her sometimes. Lovely flowers. <laughs> Let us pray before we start. Father, you give us wisdom. And you help us to keep that life with the heavenly wisdom. And you shine our faces. And you give us hope. You really heal our genes. You are a living creator. Father, please help us to respond to your will. Please, Father, restore those letters, those genes. Help us be with us. So that even though our genes are changed and we can't do anything about this, but help us to experience Help us to experience this wonderful relationship between you and me. Praise the things in Jesus' name. Amen. I said those childish things can be the utmost intimacy. So utmost intimacy comes from, you know, simplicity, those childish things going beyond mediocrity to ultimate intimacy. So if you love each other so deeply, then you can understand each other. You know, God really wants to have a very intimate relationship. You know, God really, you know, can be so childish with us because he wants to have a very intimate relationship with us. You know, he, you know, tries this way, but then if we take in a very uh, scary or holy, holy way, then, you know, sometimes it doesn't match. He wants to be very close with us. Now, let's say, you know, God wants us to um, offer tithe to him. God wants us to offer one-tenth of our salary. You know, through the Bible, if you read the Bible, he wants this tithe, you know, like the shamanist way. Example, if you 
offer tithes, I will bless you. If you don't, I will punish you. But you know, our God is not a shamanist God, like I said last night. If you're good or if you're good to God, then God will bless you. But if you're not good to God, then he will be angry and, you know, punish you. He's not that kind of God. So, you know, even though you read God punishes you, but then it means he wants to be responsible for our wrong choice. It doesn't mean that because we disobey him, he's going to punish us. And that's why we get sick. It's not like that kind of shamanist theory. There, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. You know, there it says, The Lord says, The Lord of hosts. There, you know, quite great, right? It's not so common in the Bible. It's not a common expression in the Bible. What does this mean? Lord of hosts. He's the ruler of the universe. It means what? He's the owner of the universe. He owns the universe. I created everything and everything belongs to me. You know, great expression. You know, here, sounds like bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Sounds like he has a storehouse in his house. He says, give your tithe. Give me your tithe. And put it into my storehouse. And there, you know, God says, there may be food in my house. You know, kind of childish. What does this mean? If you don't give me one, you know, if you don't give me tithe, I have nothing to eat. Come on. He said he's the Lord of hosts. But then he says, if you don't provide food, I have nothing to eat. I'm hungry. You know, when I read this, I thought, hmm, it's very childish expression. So, you know, God can be childish to us. Nice. Interesting. You know, as I read, I can feel that God wants to have a very close relationship with us. God really wants to be our friends. That's how I felt from this Bible verse. Now, we say, I love you, I love you, I love you. You know, there in English, they say intimacy. Intimacy is more than love. When you have an intimate relationship, it means very, very close relationship. But in Korean, we don't really use this kind of expression. You know, in Korea, you say, like, even though you met only twice, but you say, like, we have intimate relationship. But it's not like that in English. You know, intimate relationship means you have no secrets because you're so close. Wh if you have no secrets between your friends, then you can say, we are intimate friends. In English, you know, intimate, you know, intimacy means you have no secrets between you and that person. You are not ashamed because of each other. Now, when can you have th this kind of relationship? What kind of relationship it can it be? Husband and wife? Aren't you sometimes shy? Well, yes, you're not supposed to be shy each other. 
But sometimes, you know, you don't feel so comfortable, you know, or sometimes, you know, you have pride, you know. But of course, yes, husband and wife should be very close. They, suppo they are supposed to be very close. They don't have to feel, you know, they don't have to be ashamed. They don't have to be shy. But then, you know, sometimes, you know, we are shy. You know, sometimes we get embarrassed. But then, what kind of relationship doesn't have this kind of embarrassing or shyness? Well, parents and children, yes. But then, you know, as they get older, sometimes they have, you know, embarrassing moment. Now, let's say there's a mother and then five years old boy. Five or six, four or five years old boys, you know? Now, this little boy is not ashamed, even though he's naked in front of his mother. You know, mommy, you know, gives him a bath, and he, he feels very good. He's not shy. He's not embarrassed. But when he grows up, you know, he can't do that. So we cannot have this kind of intimate relationship in our lives for a long time. But if we have this, you know, kind of intimate relationship for a long time, what a blessing. You know, I try very hard to have this in intimate relationship with my wife. So, you know, I practice with my wife. You know, I sometimes act like a child. Honey, dear... And then my wife says, you know, you don't look like yourself, okay, honey? That's my wife's answer. Ah, oh, come on. You know, if I act like, you know, a child, then you should accept me as I am. You know, my wife used to be a teacher. So she's very, you know, you know, she really wants to discipline me sometimes. She really wants to train, I mean, teach me. And then, you know, if I act like that, and then my wife said, act your age, behave yourself. It's very difficult to have an intimate relationship, you know. <laughs> So, you know, I want to have a very intimate relationship with you guys. So, you know, I just say this because I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to, ha I want to have a very intimate relationship. You know, God tries very hard to have an intimate relationship with us. So he tries very hard. But if you read this Bible verse with the shamanis shamanism, You know, every week, sometimes an elder comes out in front, you know, at the church service, and they say, you know, and then this week is about tithe, and he reads like that, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, says the Lord of hosts. You know, they said this way. But then, you know, you know, some Christians, when they don't bring tithe, but then they only bring a little less of tithe, and then they're very afraid. Here he says, food in my house. What, what does this mean? You know, in my, you know, local expression, oh, what a God. Come on. He has no food. But if you take this meaning with a, f you know, fearful feeling, then, you know, you can be afraid of God. You will feel like 
God says, give me your money, give me your food, things like that. And here it says, prove me now in this. God says, well, give me your type and test me and see and see if I bless you or not. Now, you know, it's like God, I mean, it's like dad talking to his son. You have to sense this. You have to sense the true meaning. You know, Bible is a love letter from God, our loving creator. Our creator, you know, created us to give us love. Then, you know, he's not going to say, you know, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they, you know, he's not going to speak to us in this way. The Bible says, you know, nobody can test God according to the Bible. Nobody can test God. But here he says, God says, well, test me. Interesting. Interesting. And then here he says, continues. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there would not be room enough to receive it. That's what he said. Now here, Lord of hosts, do not do you think God is going to be hungry because we don't give him food? He's the Lord of hosts. You know, this Bible verse, it means he, he wants to be our friends. He wants to be on the same level with us. Give me, and then I'll give you back. Uh, we shouldn't, you shouldn't think, give me, and I will give you back, you know. Intimacy is very important. Our genes are programmed to respond to love. The most beautiful truthful things and those beautiful things and those good things. You know, we are programmed to respond to those things. So, intimate Love is that kind of love. We don't have to be so formal in that kind of relationship. That's what God wants to ha God wants to have with us. Now, of course, God is a great creator, but He can. He is also our Father. And he is also our older brother. And he wants to be a friend with us. And under, and he wants to be our servant to serve us. That is God in the Bible. Now, in the Bible, you know, I am very happy. Don't you think so? You know, I know God, and I know this kind of God, you know. You know, you might say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. But, you know, my God is like, you know, I can be. You know, I can be just naked in front of, of God. I mean, because, you know, I can show everything to God. I don't have to hide anything from God because he forgives me. Now, there are Matthew chapter twenty twenty eight. Just as the Son of Man, that's Jesus, 
did not come to be served. You know, when you go to church, you say, serve God and serve God. But Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He didn't come to be served. You know, even though you recite this memory text, but then you always say, serve God. Here he says, he's not, he didn't come to be served, but to serve. Do you know what is the best obedience to your parents? You know, we say, you know, good kid and best kid, they serve their parents. Those are the best kid. You know, those Chinese philosopher, Kong Tzu also didn't say that. And the, our Bible doesn't teach that. You know, if parents are happy when they are served, then that's not the real parents. If the parents really love their children, then they serve their parents. Because when they serve, they become very happy. You know, my mom lives in Busan. My mother lives in Busan. My mother is 88 years old. You know, my mother got weak. You know, she attended the seminar all the time, but this seminar she skipped because this is the first time she didn't come to the seminar. You know, when I have a chance to go to Busan, I go to my mother's house and sleep. You know, my mother is 88 years old. Now, I am almost 66 years old. But my mother wants to take care of me. And I feel like, Mom, do you know how old I am? I'm 66 almost, right? So, you know, when, when I go to my mother's house, sometimes I feel bothered because... You know, because she's, you know, old, she feels cold. So because she feels cold, she thinks I feel cold too, you know, but then I don't feel cold. And then she's like, oh, more blankets? And I said, fine, mother. You know, but then she kept asking and asking more blankets and more blankets. And I said, mother. I'm okay. You know, but the thing is, you know, <laughs> you know, this, I felt a little hot, you know. I was almost asleep, but I felt a little hot. So I woke up and I see double blankets. You know, I get upset. But, you know, you just have those two blankets and make mother happy, then that is a good kid. So, you know, when your mother gives, you know, you more blankets, but then you don't refuse and you just have two blankets. So before I go to bed, before I fall asleep, mother doesn't go to bed. Mother doesn't fall asleep. Oh, he's going to be cold. He's going to be cold. So, you know, she's ready to give me another blanket. You know, then I get sweat. <laughs> now on I wait until my mother falls asleep. <laughs> and if I feel like she's asleep, then I take those one blanket off. <laughs> so good kids let their parents do whatever they want to do. And the Chinese philosopher Kong Tzu, they 
he said about this. So they had this competition, you know, good child competition. And so, uh, you know, people went there to this best kid, you know, the first prize kid. And then they realized that, you know, um, the best kid's mother was washing um, her kid's feet. Now, one day, that was a very hot summer day. My mother feels cold, usually. And, you know, she closed she closed all the doors, you know, and the windows. But then because I feel so hot, I open all the doors and windows. N it was about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and I felt so hot. And I was thinking, oh, man, it's so hot. This summer is killing me. So I couldn't sleep from that time. You know, we had no air conditioner. So in the morning, I woke up, you know, I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning and I found all the windows and, you know, doors are closed. And my mother said, uh, were you okay? Didn't you feel cold? Warm enough? You know, as my mom got older, you know, she has her opinion. She ignores my opinion. She doesn't listen to my opinion. But if you're patient and let her do it, that's good. Because she wants to do it. That is how God is with us. God really wants to give us love. But if we, if we refuse it, then, you know, now... God didn't come to be served, but to serve. That is our God. God wants to serve us. And to give his life a ransom for many. That is our God. Do you think this kind of God says, if you don't give me tithe, I will punish you? You know, our church, but then our church teaches you, if you don't give tithe, if you offer, if you don't offer tithe, you know, you'll get punished, things like that. You know, those kind of teachings make people misunderstand God. Now, those who keep um, intimate relationship is healthy. We have this data. Those who have intimate relationship, they are healthy. Now, this is the healing power. The healing power of intimacy that you see percentage of patients dying within six months of the heart surgery. That's the percentage of people within six months after the open heart operation. You know, death rate is about 10% from this operation, open heart operation. This is very dangerous. So those patients who goes into the operation room, you know, They are really stressed. Now, 
Now let's say you know the operation went well. Because the operation went well, you know, doctors thought, you know, this patient is going to make it. But then, you know, some patients don't make it. So when they have, like, corpse autopsy, and then doctors cannot find the reason why this patient died. They had no problems. But then some people die. So they decided to find out the reason. And they thought maybe there must be some kind of psychological reason. Now that's the death rate ratio. And then they had two questions to the patients. They made two questions to the patients. Group participation. It means, you know, if whether they are participated in group activities. Here, you guys, yes, you participate in group activities. When you participate in, you know, group activities, means you have to sacrifice your own, you know. your own things, you know, you have to go to the group meeting in a certain time, you know, things like that. So you have to sacrifice something. And the second question was religious strength and comfort. They asked this question, religious strength and comforts. Your answer is yes. Now you're killing three birds with one stone. So your answer is yes, yes. So yes, yes, the death ratio was only 3%. No, no, those people, their death rate was more than 22%. Now, what's the difference between 3 to 22? It's more than seven times higher. Cannot be coincidence. Cannot happen by chance. If it, it has seven times higher, then there must be reasons. Now, yes, one answer yes, one answer no. Those two, about, you know, 8, 9%. So it is very wonderful to say yes, yes to those two questions. Wow. What a result. Statistically, statistically we say seven times more. But you know, I don't finish, I don't stop here. I don't only look at these things with a statistic viewpoint. To me, it is more than seven times. Because if it has a seven times differences, then it means, you know, there are some people who survived, even though they say, no, no. But then some people said, yes, yes, but, you know, they died. Then what's, what's wrong? Some people said, no, no, but some survived. But then, you know, 3%, even though they said, yes, yes, they died. Hmm, interesting. You have to look into this kind of things. They are exceptions. Now, what does this mean? Yes, yes. They didn't do it with their heart. Did you participate in the group? Yes. Yes, I did. 
It means you came here to listen to the lecture, but then you doze off. That is yes, of course, you came to listen to the lecture. Did you hear about God? Yeah, of course, yeah, 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 I know. It means no, no. So even though those 3% person says yes, yes, but it's actually no, no. So those who said yes, yes, heartfully, then they will not die. If that yes is real yes, then there's no reason to die. So you have to train. You have to open your eyes to see the truth. Now, you shouldn't just read this map. Oh, seven times higher. Hmm, that's all. No, you have to see the big difference from this. Now, this kind of intimate relationship between God and you, you have to feel the intimate relationship with God. And that's why every night I try very hard. I try very hard because I want you to feel this intimate relationship with God. Can you feel it? Healing power of intimacy is very important. So when you study the Bible, you have to see this kind of, you know, God who wants to have intimate relationship. And that intimate relationship will turn on, turn your gene, turn on your genes. So when you go back, you know, to your own places, you have to study in this way. You know, when you come to my home page, we have this Bible study. We have this Bible study section. And, you know, I write, you know, and we have also some video clips there as well. You know, unfortunately... Many Bible teachings are just holy, holy, holy. But in fact, God wants to have a very intimate relationship. God can be childish to you, you know. So here, he doesn't want to be served, but he wants to serve us. So with this understanding, you have to understand tithe. So let's go back to our Malachi chapter 3. You know, whatever the things we earn, they're all gods. You know, he gave us these things, but that he wants some back. Now, what is this? Now, let's say, you know, You know, I bought, you know, th those big bag of popcorn for my son and say, this is yours. And then dad is waiting. Can you give me some? You know what? You know, I can just say, well, you know, this is daddy's mm, and... Daddy bought this with daddy's money. So, you know, he can just take some out before he gives to his son. But then he gave this bag of popcorn and then asked for some, you know.
No, it's actually it is totally different. You know, you take your s- you know some out and then you give. You know, it means you know this popcorn is mine, even though I give it to you. You you eat mine. Now you give some you you know give it all, and then you say, "Oh, give me some." Then that is son's popcorn, but you're asking for something. You know that is our God. You know he gave us all. So, and said, so, "You know I'm hungry a little. Please, can you give me some?" Oh, he's a cool and wonderful God. You know, God is like, I have a lot of money and I can give you this all. Yes, of course. Yeah, we need that. This is kind of vertical relationship. Yes, we have vertical relationship with God, but to be very intimate, you have to have a parallel relationship and it's more like even he wants to serve us it's not he didn't come to be served but to serve so you give you know those whole bag of popcorn to your son and my dear son would you would you like to give me some what is that it means I served you. It means I served you. My dear son, you're my owner. So I worked very hard to, you know, buy these things for you. So um, if you want to be merciful, if you have grace on me, you know, give me some. I think it's so wonderful. Whenever I read this, oh, you know, God will be pleased. But if you say like, oh, God wants me to give him tithe, oh, what a God, then, you know, he won't be so pleased. Even though God is high above, even though he buys those things for us, but then he says, this is yours. And then he becomes parallel relationship or he he can become our servant. He can even become our servant to get something from us. He wants to serve us as a servant. Why? Because he loves us so much and he's very happy to serve us. Now, this son can only know the joy of receiving. But what kind of joy is uh, better and more? Yes, give, to give. So this father wants this son to have this kind of wonderful joy from giving. So and that's why the father says, can you give me some? So, you know, a you know, long time ago, I did it to with my son. You know, I said, son, would you give me some? And my son says, you have a lot of money. You know, I, I was speechless. Well, dad, you have your money, man. You, daddy, buy it for yourself. That is quite rational. So, you know, we shouldn't stop being rational. You know, it's not the matter of you have money or n- not. It's about you and me relationship. Please have intimate relationship with me. It's like that. You know, God cannot be hungry. You know, God wants to teach those kind of things, you know, to us. You know, I tried to teach this to my son, but it was very difficult. You know, I did it one more time, and my son said, Daddy, you have your money, so buy it for yourself. So I said to my son, you know, you're very happy to receive from your dad, right? And my son said, yeah. Do I look happy? And my son says, yeah, you look happy. 
And I asked, why do you think I'm happy? And my son said, I don't know. And I said, you know, I'm happy. Why? Because I give. And my son asks, oh, can you be still happy even though you give? So I said, yes. And my son says, really? Really? Is it, I mean, are you happy even though you give? So I said, well, test, test me. Well, test yourself. That's what God says in Malachi, test me. That's what God says, prove me now. Wonderful, isn't it? So my dad, mm, should I try? You know, should I try? So I said, yeah, try, try. Give some, give some. And so my son, you know, he wasn't willing, but then, you know, he tried to be happier, so he tried. Okay, Dad, here. And then I said, thank you. And then my son was laughing, very happy. Yeah, it was better than he thought. And, he, and my son said, hey, have some more, Dad. So, you know, we give and take. And so my son and me, we give and take each other, from each other. Tithe is this. Isn't this wonderful? I pray that you have this intimate relationship with God in your life. So you receive this wonderful, yet childish, but very utmost, ultimate relationship. I really hope you have this relationship with God. I hope you restore this relationship with God. Interesting, right? <laughs> Let's sing God is so good. Father, you know we are selfish. We thank you so much for your wonderful love. You know that we are selfish, and but you want us to experience this wonderful joy from giving.
Father, you want to have a very intimate relationship with us, and you try very hard to explain this. Please help us to have a very wonderful, intimate relationship with you, even though it is childish. But help us to understand that ultimate, wonderful relationship with you. Help us to taste your wonderful love. Help us to experience this wonderful beauty and the truth and the goodness so that our damaged, our changed genes will be turned on. Please, Father, help us to open our spiritual eyes and open our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's encourage each other. Have a wonderful rest and restore.